let's work through an example problem in chapter six. So it says Artichokes R Us uses a perpetual inventory system. On June 1st, our beginning inventory was 10 units at $5 a piece. We made a purchase on June 5th of 15 units at $6 a piece. On June 10th, we sold 10 units. On June 12th, we purchased 20 more units, this time $8 a piece. And then to round out the month, we sold 25 units on June 28th. So we're going to use the moving average cost method to find the cost of goods sold and the ending inventory in this problem. So we're going to write them all out, write out every single transaction in this chart so that way we can keep everything organized. So the first piece of information that we need to write is what we are told about June 1st and the beginning inventory. So the beginning inventory goes in that first column. We write 10 at $5 for 10 units at $5 a piece equals $50. We get that by taking our number of units and multiplying it by our unit cost. Well, that wasn't just our beginning inventory on that day. That was also the ending inventory on June 1st. So we write that same piece over in the ending inventory section of this table as well. Then on June 5th, we purchased some units. So under the purchases column, we write 15 at $6 a piece equals $90. We get that by taking 15 times 6. Then you'll notice over in the ending inventory, this is where things are a little bit different under this method compared to FIFO and LIFO. Under FIFO and LIFO, we wanted to keep our inventories separate. When we're doing the average cost method, we want to combine our inventories. So we initially had 10 units. We just bought 15 more, so now we have 25 units. At some average unit cost, we don't know that yet, so we leave some space and write an equal sign. Our inventory was worth $50. Then we just purchased inventory worth $90. So 50 plus 90 equals that 140 that you see over for your ending inventory. Now we need to find our average unit cost. To do that, we take our total value of our inventory, that $140, and we divide it by the number of units that we have, the 25. So $140 divided by 25 units gives us an average unit cost of $5.60. Now on June 10th, we made a sale. We sold 10 units. So under the cost of goods sold section, we write 10 at $5.60. We take that from the most recent average unit cost. So 10 at 560 equals $56. And then we go over to our ending inventory. And you'll notice that that average unit cost did not change over there. So that average unit cost, the $5 or the $5.60 that we have in this problem, that only changes whenever there's a purchase. When there's a sale, it remains the same. So we had 25 units, we sold 10 of them, so we have 15 left. So 15 units at $5.60 equals $84. Now here on the 12th, we purchased 20 more units at $8 a piece this time. So we write that over in our purchases column, 20 at eight equals $160. Then we go over to the ending inventory. We had 15 units. We just bought 20 more. So now we have 35 units in our inventory. So we write out that 35 
at some unit cost, right? Now we made another purchase, so that average unit cost is going to change. But before we can find that average unit cost, we need to find the total value of our inventory first. So our inventory was worth $84. We just bought inventory worth 160. So 84 plus 160 equals that $244 that you see in the ending inventory column. So the step now to find our average unit cost is to take that $244 and divide it by 35, our number of units. So 244 divided by 35 gets you an average unit cost of $6.97. So we write that there for our average unit cost. Now, our final day on June 28th, we made another sale. So we sold 25 units at $6.97, the most recent average unit cost, and 25 times $6.97 comes out to $174.25, approximately, right? We're rounding in this problem so a lot of these numbers are approximates. Then our ending inventory, we had 35 units. We sold 25 of them. So now we have 10 units left at $6.97 since our average unit cost does not change during a sale, right? So that remains at $6.97. 10 times 6.97 gets us our $69.70 as our value of our inventory on June 28th. So now we can find our cost of goods sold. So we are going to just be looking at our cost of goods sold column right here. We made sales on the 10th and the 28th. The total values of those sales were the $56 and the $174.25. So your cost of goods sold is the sum of those two amounts, $230.25. Now, our ending inventory, we are going to be looking at our ending inventory on our final day. So on June 28th, our ending inventory was $69.70. And we can see that as the total on that day. 